Hey guys, Jobwise Jones here. Nice to see you guys again. I'm here today to answer some questions regarding tough interview questions for the fire fighters, uh, people who are going through the firefighting recruitment process, the ones who have already passed the physical portion of the firefighting uh, requirements. Now they're up to the interviews, right? <clears throat> so I did a uh, interview, uh, video about nine months ago and people really liked that video was seen, but I got a lot of questions from the, those videos too. And so I taken out six or seven questions that people were calling difficult to answer. And I really want to get into the crux of these uh, questions with some really good answers for you. Okay. So I understand you, you're nervous, you know, you really want to get your dream job as a firefighter. I, I get it. You know, my experience of this comes from, I've never been a firefighter, but my experience comes from, I sit on the interview boards as a third party. So what a third party does, he or she looks at the fit of you, the, not your physical fitness, mental fitness, how you're going to fit into a job. So I don't really care about your schooling, blah, blah, blah. It's not important to me. I'm looking for characteristics and personality that I think will fit the job. Hope that makes sense to you. Okay. So this one gets everybody every time. Why do you want to work in this industry? You know, they, people, this one, this kind of just trips them up. They, they get kind of, you know, they know what to say. They're, they're lost. Here we go. Why do you want to work in this industry? You know, I really admire for all my life to see these public servant people, whether it be firefighters, policemen, ambulance drivers, going out there every day to save people, people they don't even know. And I've always admired that. And I've always wanted to be part of that team. I want to work as a firefighter because I want to give back to my community. I want to do more. I feel like I need to pay it forward and I want to be part of this team and I think I'll be an excellent firefighter because I want to learn as much as I can and I want to serve my community. Okay, you guys, you see, it's not just the verbal, what I'm saying to you verbally, right, to this, this interview panel in front of me, right? Because verbal communication is only 7% of communication. The other 93% of communication is nonverbal. So you see my hands a little bit, you see my shoulders roll forward. You see the sincerity in my eyebrows and my eyes. These are all things people, people are reading. They're reading these things, okay? And when you answer, look at the person who did ask you the question, you know? And then look at the other panel members too, right? And it's a sincere answer, you know? You want to be sincere. Not, uh, well, I want to do this. No, this one's a sincere answer because they really want to know who, what are you so interested in becoming a firefighter for, right? Another one, this one, this is from Kevin. Kevin, thank you for the email, and we talked on the phone a little bit. Uh, Kevin does not want his answer to be given because he feels embarrassed, but he said I could ask the que I can bring, bring up his his, uh, his question. Okay, so Kevin did ask, "Tell us about yourself, right?" And it got Kevin. Kevin told me, job wise, I I wasn't sure what to say about that. So, okay, no problem at all, Kevin. The one thing Kevin said I could ask him for this video is that. Has he always wanted to be a firefighter? He said, yes. Okay, so here's a question. Tell us about yourself. You know, since I was a little boy, I've always wanted to be a firefighter. I would never wanted to be anything else. My friends have played with their policemen dolls or their army men, whatever. I always wanted to be a firefighter since I was young. I've taken classes on firefighting and first aid and, 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 and how to help people. I've taken even some speaking classes too in case I had to speak to a crowd of people. I always try to eat the best food I can. I run a lot. I try to stay fit both physically and also mentally. I just believe that this is the dream career for me. I have wanted this all my life. I've always wanted to be a firefighter. Okay. You see that again, you guys, you, 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 you're sincere, of course, right? Cause if you always want to be a firefighter, all your life, it's going to be a sincere answer. And again, you see the shoulders, you come in closer a little bit, your shoulders are coming in there, right? You look at the person who did ask you the question, you know, and you're really being into this question because I want an answer because you're telling them you always wanted to be a firefighter. Does that make sense to you guys? I, I hope so, okay? What did you think of your previous boss? I had a guy two months ago bomb on this question. What do you think of your previous previous boss? Here's what he said. Here's what he said. Ah, she, I, you know, I took three days of overtime for her and she didn't let me get my overtime at all. She took it away. I couldn't believe it. That was this crappy, you know what I mean? Man, she's, she's okay otherwise, but that was a really crappy day, I thought, you know? Kind of unfair. That's what he said at the interview. I said, man, this guy is amazing to me. Look, guys, I don't care if your previous boss 
took, took out a hundred bucks from every check from you for the, for the last year. That's irrelevant. And the reason why it is because you do not want to come off at an interview looking like a, a clown, you know, like it's all about you. You know, you gotta be professional. You gotta take the hits and keep on going, right? This is your dream interview. You don't want to sit there and burn your last employer because what is the interview board going to think about you if you work for them? Right. They're going to think you will do the same thing to them one day. So you got to be the professional. Even if your last boss sucked, you do not reveal this at the interview when this question comes up. What do you think your previous boss? Well, my previous boss, I learned a lot from my previous boss. I learned about excellent time management because I'm a very on time precise person and she had those same skills which I really like. I also learned how to get uh, obtain more education in my in my job. She let me go to classes all the time. She never got in the way. I thought that was really encouraging. I also learned how to manage people better. She was good at that as well so I learned those skills from her. Okay you guys that's how you answer that question. Yeah it was a little murky. I know that right but don't burn them because if you get further along in this process, HR is going to give them a call, you know? Now, there's only so many things HR could say legally about you, uh, could ask about, about you. Also, the employer can only legally say so many things about, about you as well. But you don't really know these relationships, right? We say legal, 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 right? But you cannot legislate morality, right? <laughs> you know, it's illegal to, to JJ walk. I I. I do it sometimes, you know, so there we go, right? So just be careful in how you talk about your last boss because you don't want to burn them, okay? This one's for Janine, exactly. Janine said, job-wise, I have a heck of a time answering. Where do I see myself in five years? Great question, Janine. This hits a lot of people too, all right? Here's the deal. Think about this. Think about loyalty, right? That's all you got to think about. Where do you see yourself in five years? Think loyal loyalty, right? Okay. So uh, when it comes to working for Station 7, where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> I see myself here working hard and learning more. In five years, I will definitely be here. Maybe I'll be a paramedic. Maybe I'll have a lot more skills from taking educa ed education classes on firefighting. Maybe I will write, write, write a, a, a manual. Who knows? But wherever I'm going to be is going to be here at Station 7. I dream of working here for station seven for the rest of my career i i love it here i think it'll be a great place to have my career i will be here at station seven okay so there we go the reason why i want you guys to do some repetitive in this question station seven the station seven blah, because here's the reality okay the panel in front of you you got four or five people in front of you they're coming from their jobs to, to interview you for me alone i gotta leave my job for the whole day i'm there doing something that's not within my job right be on an interview panel is not part of my job, so I'm losing a day. They're down here in front of you, and here's the reality. They're tired. You know, four people in front of you, five people. They're interviewing eight people just like you who are just into this in interviewing, right? But they're tired. You want to drop little bombs as you talk, little bombs, right? You said in the answer, Station 7, Station 7, Station 7. And they're going to remember that, right? Job Wise Jones, he said in five years, Station 7 three times. He must really want to work for Station 7. He didn't say, I'm going to be working for Station 9 or Station 13. He said he's going to be here, uh, expanding up on his education, uh, being being a good team member or whatever, right? Good question, right? Great question. Here's a question that's meant to be a trick question, okay? And they're looking for how you answer this trick question. It is a trick question, guys. In the first interview, they're probably going to ask you, what salary are you looking for? Right, <laughs> it's a good question, right? It's just a question meant to see if you've done your homework regarding how to answer this question, right? So, <laughs> what salary are you looking for? Oh, thank you very much for that question. I'm looking for a salary equal to an entry level firefighter that is on average in the state. Boom, done, there you go, okay? That's all you guys say. Do not get caught up. People get caught up in this. Well, whatever the, the 20000 I think I saw last time in, in Bakersfield for a firefighter per whatever. No, no, no. I think it was 90000 for it. Don't get caught up in that, guys. Remain cool and factual, right? This isn't the answer of, like, where do you see yourself in five years? This answer here, you remain cool and collected, right? Don't show up any emotion. 
I would like to uh, receive the pay that an entry level firefighter would make on, on, a, on a statewide basis or national basis. That's all you gotta say, guys. Do not get caught up in the nonsense, right? Do not get caught up in the stuff that that you think is going to sound good, right? Just use the facts this time, okay? It's all you gotta do, right? What is your greatest failure and what did you learn from it? It's a good question. And do you know why this question is there? When you have what I would call status positions, policemen, fire, pilots, FBI, sometimes those jobs can get kind of heady. You start building some ego, <clears throat> right? And it's good to have a little ego when you're a public official, of course, right? You gotta be a little firm, firm on your stuff, but they don't want this overbearing, egotistical person working for the public. This is why this question's here, okay? It's not meant to trip you up, it's meant to, for you to be honest. So what's your greatest failure <clears throat> and what did you learn from it? <clears throat> oh, thank you, I appreciate that question very much. Well, when I was in college, I, I you know, my family were all, were all educators. And when I was in college, I, I went down the same route to become an educator because I thought that's what my family wanted. But this is why I switched my major over to fire science because I wanted to become a firefighter. And I thought it was important to become a firefighter because that's what I want to do. And my biggest failure was that I didn't communicate with my family that I changed majors for a whole year. And I felt bad about that because I didn't let them know because I was kind of ashamed, I guess, or maybe scared. Uh, I'd, I'd follow the family line which I didn't, I went into fire science instead. So my biggest failure was not communicating properly with my family. They deserve to have known my desire to be a firefighter and not have waited a year to hear from me what I really want to do with my life. So that's the truth, but thank you very much for your question. So you guys, you see there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of humility there. There's a lot of honesty there. You need to pick out something in your life where you failed at. You need to vocalize it perfectly or in a way that, they can relate, right? Because, you know, you, you think of these motivational speakers, right? Like, you know, these motivational guys talk, they do really good, right? The reason why they do so well, because all they're doing, guys, are like comedians. They're just telling stories. That's all they're doing. They're telling stories, right? And you're the same way. You're telling them a story about your life in college, how, well, me, how, how you failed to tell you your family you don't want to be a teacher, you want to be a fire science major or whatever, right? But it's a story and you fold them into your story. And at the end of the story, you express regret because people with e egos are never sorry. They never ex express regret, right? They're a little narcissistic, right? You don't want that in a public capacity as, as, as an official. Maybe the CEO of IBM is fine, but not for a firefighter or a policeman. You kind of have this overburdened big head out there in your job. You can be confident but you cannot have a lot of ego, right? That's the difference, okay? So tell them your story and tell them the truth and that's all you gotta do, you know? Last one for you guys. Do you have any questions for us? <clears throat> Man, you guys, I, I probably was set on probably four interview boards in the past year for firefighters. I probably talked to about 20 different candidates. Of that, only seven had questions for the board. Do you know what happens to the other 13 who don't even ask a question? <laughs> they didn't get called. They did not get called. The reason why, there is no way in 40 minutes, four people in front of you could answer every single question you might have about the firefighting profession, job, etc. No way. When you don't ask those questions, you show a lack of curiosity. Can you imagine a firefighter without curiosity? Listen, listen, listen. You cannot be a non-curious person as a firefighter. You have to be curious. Heads on a swivel, you're looking around, you're doing things, right? Ask questions, guys, okay? One question for sure I want you to ask always. Oh, excuse me, you're a firefighter, right? Yes. Why do you like being a firefighter? That's called the power transference. It's a word I coined a couple years ago. Power transference means that you're asking a question that puts the interview board on the spot 
and makes them the interviewee and now you are the interviewer because you're making sure they know, yes, they're interviewing you, but you're also interviewing them, right? It's an educated, smart question to ask, understand? That's what you wanna do, okay? Always ask that question. You guys, I'm here all the time for you. You know, I'm not a firefighter, but I've been through so many interviews in the past 25 years, I can help you. Please subscribe to my channel. Please hit click, please click for like, of course. Also too, if you have more of a personal nature you want to talk to me about, it's no problem at all. Jobwisejones at gmail.com. If you want interview help, like actual interviewed on, on the phone or on Zoom, I will interview you too. I will do it. Send me jobwisejones at gmail.com and I'll take care of you that way too. I laugh because I do this all the time for people. <laughs> and so it's funny because I'm pretty hard on the, on the, on interviews, you know. And some of my in interviewees, they don't like, like me the first one or two times, right? Because I'm, I'm pretty hard. But after the third or fourth time, we get this flow going. And by time number five, they're ready to go for the interview. Look, guys, all I want you to do is succeed. That's all I give a damn about. That's all I care about. Man, I want to pay it forward. I want you to succeed, okay? Thank you very much, you guys. You have a good day. Bye-bye.